Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. This will be a more in-depth time lapse of how I assemble my gearbox and drivetrain assemblies. Now, as you will see, I use uh, quite a bit of different uh, greases, so I'll go over them a little bit more in depth to uh, explain the madness behind it. So you just saw the Sura HD grease there. That's the uh, anti-wear AW grease, and that's just the basic grease that comes in all the kits. And here we have just a basic uh, super lube multi-purpose uh, synthetic grease. Basic uh, multi-purpose or bearing oil. Um, I use bearings on all my kits and especially bearings that go inside of a gearbox like this. I'll, I'll give them a little bit extra oil. A lot of times the oil will just be on the outside and coat it all over the bearing. So uh, the needle application in this kind of setup works the best to get behind the, the jacket and the cradle that holds those bearings. I'll work it in as best I can, kind of let them sit and uh, get the oil soaked up. Now back to uh, all the different greases that I use. Basically the reason behind that is I will try to suit them to the application that I'm using um, and how I'm gonna be using the particular buggy. So you'll notice some, you know, drivetrains or gearboxes have uh, all plastic or nylon gears. Some will have both plastic and metal. Um, and some will have full metal. So this allows me to kind of adjust and customize and cater. Now for the Sierra or HG uh, grease, for those of you that don't know, that grease is actually um, infused with boron nitrate, uh, which really helps as a friction reducer. So I'll use that grease for any nylon or plastic type gearing and that does a really good job at coating and um, reducing friction. So here you see me uh, pressing in those bearings. I'm actually using the um, drive axles to help push or seat those bearings in. You wanna make sure that those are 100% flush. A lot of times that hole won't be perfectly round or you know, you'll know you get some slight defects from manufacturing. So if that's not perfectly flush within there, um, sometimes it'll cause the gear mesh to be slightly off um, or you'll get some added friction or heat on that bearing. So super important, you do want to make sure, you can also use a socket, like a really small socket if you have one, um, but want to make sure that those are 100% flush in there. Now you'll see here in a couple minutes, the basic um, ceramic grease or basic kit grease that a lot of the um, kits come with, really all I use that grease for is to kind of keep or hold in place any like loose fitting parts during assembly. So here I'm actually just using it to fill that gap these are one of the um, uh, gear um, gear mounts and it's basically just a piece of plastic that'll that'll sit in there and uh, without that grease it is constantly falling out and falling all over the place and it can get kind of annoying um, and then the grease will also kind of help fill any voids or gaps in there um, for dust I mean you would be amazed on how easy um, dust finds its way into a uh, a lot of these gear boxes. So you'll see throughout the build periodically, um, really all I use that for is just basic assembly and, and keeping and holding parts together. Now for the AW or the anti-wear grease, I only use that grease on bevel gears um, to obviously not only reduce wear, um, but to create a semi kind of locking differential in a sense. Now that grease is super, super tacky. So you really only want to use it on uh, bevel gears because if not, if you use it on you know, spur gears or pinion gears, things like that, it'll put too much load on the motor and you'll definitely burn your motor out a lot faster. So basically that will create a semi-locking differential um, with two-wheel drive buggies. I mean, that's all you have is the rear. So it'll really help you know, get you out of ruts and make that rear end a lot tighter um, to help with traction. So I'll put it on the actual bevel gears. I'll actually use it for the little pins here um, that you'll see. It really kind of helps keep the pins in place. Now this grease is, like I said, super, super sticky and tacky. So if you're not paying attention, you know, you're, you're using it and then you look away and then all of a sudden it's all over your hands, your feet, your face, your dog somehow has it all over him. Uh, this stuff is, it's kind of yucky. So uh, you can use like a little applicator. I'm using a little foam kind of brush applicator, um, or you can just use the, the grease uh, nozzle itself. 
Now, depending on how much you use is how stiff or, or tight those gears are going to be. So it's something I, I kind of recommend playing around with. There's really no set amount. Um, as you get used to it, you'll kind of feel it. Um, you, you know, you can start with a little bit and kind of semi-assemble it, move it around, see how it feels. If it's not really too sticky or tacky, you can add a little bit more um, to stiffen it up until it really gets to the consistency you like. Um, a lot of times you'll see, and I do it in this video, if I put too much or I feel that it's just a little bit too stiff, I'll actually add some of that HG uh, Sarah grease and that'll kind of help loosen it up and adds a little bit of um, smoothness, uh, not, not so sticky and tacky. So something I, I kind of recommend playing around with, but you'll see me in the video, you know, throughout, I'm, I'm always moving the gears around and I'm always feeling how it feels to make sure that it's, you know, at a good consistency, um, not too tight, not too loose. So there you just saw me um, apply some HG grease to the back of that bevel gear. Something to keep in mind, it's not always just the gear faces that will make contact with each other and that need, you know, some type of lubrication. A lot of things like those back of those bevel gears, um, you know, as that's rotating and moving, you know, that'll slide and kind of vibrate with on that pin. So you want to make sure that you apply grease to the backs of things like that. Also, any gears that, you know, will we'll slide onto any pins that are backed up against like an E-clip um, that's holding a bearing in, you know, you'll want to apply some, some grease onto those things as well, just to make sure that everything is, you know, lubricated just in case you get any movement or vibration, or if it happens to, you know, actually make contact with like an E-clip or anything like that. Um, I, I might possibly overdo it sometimes with the grease, um, but it helps me sleep at night and I know that that gearbox is, is assembled, you know, and lubricated as best as it can to, to give it the best, you know, chance at, at lasting as long as it can. Um, there's been times where I haven't, you know, had to open up a gearbox in, you know, almost a couple years. Um, and, you know, the gearbox a lot of times will feel just as good as it did, you know, when I assembled it, other than, you know, breaking in and kind of loosening up a little bit over, over time and over the years. But, you know, this is not a fail proof method, but this is a method that has been, you know, very good for me and, and has had a, you know, fairly high track record of, of success. So here, like I mentioned, I'm um, just applying some of that um, anti-wear grease to those bevel gears. Um, I'll go back and forth, you know, using that little foam applicator or like I said, the nozzle, um, but kind of just making sure that I coat everything, get it within the grooves and you know, you'll see me move it and kind of spin it around, semi-assemble semi it and kind of adjust and add um, as I feel necessary. So another little trick that I've started using on um, newer and future builds, over using just uh, standard paper towels that you can see me using here. I've actually been using those blue uh, mechanics paper towels or like blue mechanic um, shop towels they call them they're not the actual like cloth ones those leave a lot of like lint and stuff behind um, but they're, they're just the normal paper ones but they're a lot thicker than just the standard you know white normal paper towels and even with the, the paper towels I find um, that they do leave kind of some of that like fine hair paper particle behind or whatever you want to call it so um, definitely recommend that 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 helps with cleanup uh, of grease you know all over the all over your fingers or you know all over the casing um, definitely helps absorb a lot better than just standard paper towels so like i mentioned here just you know adding some grease to that e-clip and around it just in case that uh, you know face of that gear actually won't make contact with it now just like on the small bevel gears on the large bevel gears i'll also apply some of that um, anti-wear grease same thing kind of spreading it around making sure that i get it 
you know, within the grooves. Um, there I'll just use some, you know, HD grease on that shaft, uh, make sure that there's some, you know, grease on the shaft. This one actually had um, some brass inserts. Same thing, um, you know, since that's metal, that, that boron will help kind of create a nice little uh, grease barrier um, for that, the large um, bevel gear to kind of spin on. Here I'm grabbing the other side of the bevel gear and applying more anti-wear grease to this particular one. I ended up applying just a little bit of that HD grease um, just to kind of loosen it up a little bit. I had put just a little extra on that larger bevel gear. So you'll see me kind of move it and spin it around and um, kind of get a feel for um, how it kind of feels within there. Now this is where that um, super lube or ceramic grease is gonna come into play. You saw me there, I just put some of that HG grease on the outside of that gear. The only downside of that boron grease that I find is that it is not as tacky. Um, it can be kind of a little bit wetter and it doesn't stick to the gears as well. So what I do is I add um, some of the super lube or the ceramic grease and it's a lot more tackier. It's nowhere near as tacky as that anti-wear grease, but it's tacky enough to kind of mix with that HG boron grease and create a little bit stickier, create a little bit more tacky so it doesn't kind of fling off and fly everywhere. I mean, with the amount of grease that I use, I'm still going to get a lot of fling off and, and fly off, but um, really all I use that um, super lube ceramic grease for is just to create a little bit more tacky consistency with, within that uh, boron grease to kind of uh, thicken it up a little bit. Good thing with that uh, grease is that it's pretty much a multi-purpose and it, it's compatible with any type of grease you use. So, you know, whether you use it with the, the AW grease or the HD grease uh, or just the, the basic kit grease. Um, there's actually another grease that I use, um, but I, I don't use it in this particular application. Um, it's the Molly Beam grease uh, that that uh, Tamiya makes, but I didn't have any crazy metal parts or, or metal, you know, bevel gears or anything uh, on this transmission, so I didn't use it. Um, but the Super Lube is is really compatible with with any grease, so it'll jive and, and mix together without any issues. So here you're probably thinking to yourself, what the heck am I doing applying grease, you know, to the outside of the casing or, or housing here? And really all this is for is to stop and, and keep and prevent um, dust and dirt um, and water from getting inside the, uh, the housing and, and the transmission and just really making a bad day of things. Um, just like I mentioned, when you press in those bearings, uh, you know, it's plastic, so you're gonna have some inconsistencies and imperfections within the casting and the molding. So this is to help, you know, fill that gap and keep, you know, a lot of dust and dirt out. When when you close the housings together, you know, it'll squirt out and, uh, you know, as you wipe it um, clean, it'll, it'll create a nice little barrier. So here you see me, um, putting together the two halves of the uh, gearbox assembly and I'm actually using some plastic safe thread locker. And the reason why I use uh, this thread locker is uh, two reasons. It helps to kind of lubricate that screw and, and especially when you're going into new plastic like that. And then the second reason is obviously to you know, prevent those screws from, from backing out, but you do not want to go you know crazy tight on this. If you do, um, it could possibly cause some, some gear mesh issues where you're, you're putting too much force on the gears. Um, and then also, you know, you can get some, some stress cracks or some hairline cracks um, in the plastic as, as time goes on. So don't go crazy tight. Um, you know, you wanna, uh, I, I kind of treat this like I am like, like I am when I'm putting on a, a tire or a wheel or, or a head gasket, I kind of go in a star pattern and create an even force um, as I go around the housing and screw in the screws and this particular one ended up having a, um, a longer bolt and nut um, on the bottom. But yeah, I'll, I'll go around and, and, you know, snug them up, you know, semi-tight, and then I'll go back and um, make sure that there's no gaps and make sure that it's, you know, at least firm. 
always checking, you know, the gears to make sure that the gears still feel good and normal um, as I'm going around and screwing that housing in. So I've kind of mentioned in some other videos that that plastic thread locker from Permatex, you, you do not want to use normal blue thread locker. Um, it's not compatible with plastic and it'll eat it and crack it. But this stuff is, you know, designed and manufactured. So it works out really good. Um, it's just a little messy. And the last thing I want to mention as we're kind of wrapping up the gearbox assembly is pinion gears. Um, most of the Tamiya kits include an aluminum one and you'll definitely want to swap that out uh, for a steel, um, steel pinion gear, you know, from somebody like Robinson Racing. The aluminum ones, they will wear super fast. And when they wear, they create a yucky metal paste that will just get everywhere inside of that gearbox assembly and just ruin your day so you don't see me put them in here but um all the gearbox assemblies when i go to attach the motor um, it's always a uh, still still pinion gear i will never touch uh, those aluminum ones so kind of the last little tip as we uh finish up the uh, gearbox assembly here all right well this concludes um, this video thank you guys so much for joining me and watching if you guys have any questions or comments uh, feel free to um, leave them down below other than that, thank you guys again very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.